I'm Tree, and this is Project Transparency. Interestingly, I am at the grocery store for the second time today, and the second time I'm in the car. So I'm thinking this week, since I talked about some of my favorite artists last week, that this week I should talk about artists who have been really influential to me. And probably the first one on that list is Ed McCullough, who was my 3D art teacher when I went to art school. And he was amazing. And yes, there shall be more conversation. There's also, uh, also Alberto Giacometti, whose name I probably just slaughtered, um, who, interestingly enough, Ed McCullough is the person who introduced me to him. And as cliche as it sounds, Vincent Van Gogh is really important to me. He was one of my first artists when I was a kid, as was Piet Mondrian, and uh, Jacques Yerka, who is a Polish surrealist. So, yeah, there's a whole lot of dudes on that list, isn't there? Well then. Okay, so I will talk more about them later. I apologize for the strangeness of the light today. I'm filming very, very late, and I have a light sensitivity, so there aren't a lot of direct lights overhead. I currently have a desk lamp with, like, gauze over it in order to get enough lighting for this to be a thing that's happening. The community calendar. So I have definitely to appear on Friday. I will be at Great Harvest Bread Company from 5 to 8, and you should come by. I'm really excited. I met the person who is in charge of this for them. His name is Brent. He's the head breadhead. He is one of the top 10 coolest people I've met in Wisconsin thus far. He's really excited about me bringing larger pieces, which is something I don't haven't been doing with Definitely to Appear after the first couple last summer because it's there just isn't wall space usually and things and he's like yes bring the things we, we, we have room in the entryway that we can put a three-dimensional piece we if we use little nails we can put things on the wall I have you know industrial sticky things so we are going to be shiny so if you're looking for me this month or in September that's where I'll be. So Lane, last week I talked about, in a supplemental video, a little bit about my top five favorite artists and a couple extras just because I'm not good at following rules. So this week I wanted to talk a little bit about the artists who have influenced me the most. And one of them you know because you've met him, which is Ed McCullough. Ed McCullough was my 3D art teacher when I went to Columbia College Chicago. Ed is amazing and brilliant and he's one of those extraordinarily tall people who they shoved in a submarine in the military. He has an MA in art education. Is a firm believer that our inspiration from art doesn't just come from the visual, it comes from what we read, it comes from what we experience, and all of these things were things that Ed brought into his 3D design class. Ed taught the best 3D design class in the history of ever, and I don't think anybody else quite did it like he did. Ed would bring in things like quotes from Mother Teresa, he would read to us from Dante's Inferno, he was a Fellini film geek, so he would bring things from Fellini. We would go on walks in the South Loop and look at what are called city canyons, which Georgia O'Keeffe did an entire thing about city canyons. Yeah, this was th these were things we did, and our assignments were very different than like other 3D classes. We had line and plane and time how we interpreted that experience and using the most minimalistic materials that we could to do the thing, which is a really good training lesson for when you're an absolutely broke artist. <laughs> also, other artists that were deeply influential for me were Alberto Giacometti, who, who Ed McCullough introduced me to. He... Alberto Giacometti, whose name I am invariably pronouncing wrong, he liked to 
explore the space interaction of ground, foreground, and how objects in space create other spaces. He also, his pieces in the Art Institute, Once Upon a Time Before the New Modern Wing went in, which I haven't been to the Art Institute since since the new modern, modern wing has gone in, used to exist Caddy Corner from Francis Bacon. And I love Francis Bacon too. It's like Francis Bacon and Geiger were deeply influ are deeply influential too, especially with the gross. And part of that's because my dad's favorite, one of my dad's favorite artists is Geiger. As cliche as it sounds, Vincent van Gogh is very influential for me, mostly in his use of color but also in his experience of time and space and place. And also, hopefully not completely cliche, is Piet Mondrian, but he was deeply influenced by jazz music. And you see that in the syncopation of his, of his little squares of color. He was also deeply semiotic. He created an entire semiotic system for himself and used black lines and primary colors mostly. Once he get, got out of the, the kind of painting pretty flowers phase. There's also the cliche of Pablo Picasso, and there are a whole lot of guys on this list and not as many women. And I think that's because when I was young and learning about art initially, when I was very, very, very young, women were not necessarily as included in the art canon as they are now. Neither were people of color, which that is awful and I wish I could unlearn everything and relearn it just for those reasons. In other news, I have begun moving out of my studio in the art garage. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to still do things with the art garage or with the art garage. There's a pop culture show in, show in January that I am going to be in, assuming that it happens. But I am vacating my studio and I am taking at least a quarter off from showing there. It happens. It was a long, Lane, you know this, it was kind of a long time coming. So hopefully you are proud of me uh, for being semi-decisive about something in my life. Hopefully it means that money can be used towards other things like, I don't know, actually paying for a subscription for Premiere at the very least, if not also Photoshop. I don't know, it's kind of pricey. I need Premiere though for things like project transparency, so... That, at the very least, I will have to suck up and do. Lane, do you have any suggestions for next week's videos? You know you can always leave me a comment or something and let me know about what you're wanting to hear about this week. And remember to answer the question from the haul video. I live in a place that unironically does things like this.